In our declaration, we affirm that sex is a dimorphic, innate trait defined in relation to an organism's biological role in reproduction, male and female. Somebody, excuse me, somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. Welcome back, everyone. It looks like this is going to be a part two of the gamers versus groomers because Nick Merckx is in hot water again. Nick, the transphobe struggling against the trans game. There's no such thing as trans people. I don't know if you remember this, but Nick Merckx was the gaming streamer that was canceled by Call of Duty for criticizing a protest against the parents who were against LGBT blah, blah, blah content in the kids' schools. Nick said that he felt that that kind of information really needed to be taught to students by the parents and that it was their right to be able to inform their kid and raise their kids with the values that they want, not up for the school to be talking to the kids about sexual stuff. Well, it seems like the cancellation backfired horribly. Nick seems to be doing better than ever and is very comfortable in his recent opinions. Here is the latest hot take from one of his streams saying trans people don't exist. Nick, the transphobe struggling against the trans game. There's no such thing as trans people. That's something that you created. So have fun with your little dreamland. But that shit's not even real. Let me break it down for you, right? Penis, dude. Vagina, girl, done. Come in here with that fuck. By the language Nick is using, it seems like he's indicating that this entire thing is some sort of a psyop psychological operation against the masses of people. Now, this is a multifaceted issue, and I think that we're going to break it down with just a few clips. And you can tell me how you feel about it. By the way, like the video if you enjoy this kind of content. Subscribe for more. Check out all the other stuff I got going on here. I cover current events and culture, generally. From the perspective of a conservative-leaning, libertarian, free-thinking, conspiracy theorist, gamer. It goes pretty buck wild. I think the first issue might be main character syndrome or massive levels of narcissism. Thinking that the entire world revolves around you individually and that everyone else needs to walk on eggshells and change their behavior and change their thinking and change their language to accommodate you, who is so special. Here's an example. Trans people are sacred. We are the divine. We're practicing our divinity by expressing authenticity, by enjoying our multiplicity, elevating our humanity, finding the unity hidden inside community, remembering our collective connectivity fuels courageous creativity, unlocking the blessed spirituality that we all seek. Yeah, this is about to get The second part of the equation would be politics. It seems like we can't do anything these days without it getting hyper political. There's just no way around it. And the reality is that the Democrats have taken a very, very hard stance in supporting transgender affirmation for children. And to the point that they are very happy to wedge themselves like the commie Marxists that they are between the children and the parents. Now the American people overwhelmingly agree that gender affirming care for underage children should not be happening at all. There should be no puberty blockers. There should be no double mastectomies. There should be no genital mutilation, removal, etc. Nothing for kids. But these politicians act as if it is a human right of the children to be able to go against the wishes of their parents and get these body modifications, which really is what it is. Watch the drag queen at the Texas Democrat convention. Heart especially aches for our trans children. While the drag ban bill may have been blocked, the trans youth healthcare ban has gone into effect here in Texas, preventing access to hormone blockers that are medically necessary for more than just trans youth. 
gender-affirming care is life-saving. Access to health care is a basic human right. These policies disproportionately affect LGBTQIA youth and people of color. We have a duty to protect our most marginalized communities. Trans kids deserve to grow into healthy adults. Did you hear them? Did you hear all of the buzzwords? So because of this giant push from the political spectrum, you have these impressionable people that want to belong to a group so bad and they are virtue signaling. I agree. I agree. I'm on your side. Every single political point that you have, I have because I want to belong. And it gets so bad. It goes so far that you end up with stuff like this. I will let a doctor who has successfully transplanted a uterine complex before cut the organs out of a willing, healthy, transmasculine donor, place them in my body. I will devote myself, heart and soul, to their aftercare. I will have as much gay sex as it takes with as many trans women as it takes and let the transphobes and homophobes scratch their heads wondering what to make of it and i want to be the first trans woman to have an abortion this kind of thinking is becoming normalized and the scary thing is it's translating into parenting so we're seeing some of the craziest ideas implemented ever going through people in this spectrum of mental illness. And then they are parenting their children with the same ideology or woke points to virtue signal with the inclusive language, with the gender neutrality in everything. For those who are new to this channel, I practice gender neutral parenting, which means I'm using they them pronouns for my infant until they're old enough to let me know what pronouns they want to use and generally try to use gender neutral language and let them wear and play with and do whatever feels right to them. And as somebody who came out as a trans teen, it's been a really interesting process to watch that shift, even in my own lifetime. My grandparents are from Mexico. They just spoke Spanish. Spanish is a gendered language. And you're seeing these people say Latinx and try to change the way words are to make it more inclusive in the language. It's so offensive. It doesn't work. And it's just pissing people off. So a part of this issue is the cycle as you're going from people who are groomed and abused and then they groom and abuse and then they groom and abuse. It's a super terrible, sad cycle that needs to be broken, but the state would rather it not be because we're in a Marxist revolution. But for the record, on the science portion of it, at least some notable people are speaking out. Here's the opinion on the gender affirming care principles and protocols from the American College of Pediatricians. And we have serious concerns about the physical and mental health effects of the current protocols promoted for the care of children and adolescents in the United States who express discomfort with their biological sex. This declaration was authored by the American College of Pediatricians, but really it was developed from the expertise of hundreds of doctors, researchers, and other healthcare workers and leaders who for years have been sounding the alarm on the harmful protocols that continue to be promoted by the medical organizations in the United States. Despite recent revelations from the leaked WPATH files and the recent release of the final report from the CAST review, these medical organizations have not changed course. So we are calling on these medical organizations of the United States, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Endocrine Society, the Pediatric Endocrine Society, the American Medical Association, the American Psychological Association, and the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry to follow the science and their European colleagues and immediately stop the promotion of social affirmation, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries for, sur for children and adolescents who experience distress over their biological sex. In our declaration, we affirm that sex is a dimorphic, innate trait defined in relation to an organism's biological role in reproduction, male and female. 
This genetic signature is present in every nucleated somatic cell in the body and is not altered by drugs or surgical interventions. Consideration of these innate differences is critical to the practice of good medicine and to the development of sound policy for children and adults alike. Medical decision making should be based upon an individual's biological sex. It should respect biological reality and the dignity of the person by compassionately addressing the whole person. We are here defying the claims made by these medical organizations in the US that those of us who are concerned are a minority and that their protocols are consensus. They are not consensus and we are speaking in a loud unified voice enough. We got the drag queen, we got the severe narcissist, we got the transparent, then we have the gamer and the American College of Pediatricians. The whole world's polarizing and it sucks, but I remember when I was younger, my dad said, you know what? It's not always fun, but you have to pick a side. You can't ride the fence. I have five children. The gender ideology BS is not going to be a part of the conversation. I don't have any big degrees. I'm not well educated. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I can't do super advanced math, but at least I can count the genders. Good on you, Nick Merckx. Stay based. I'll see you guys next time.